everyone, this is Elisa with uh, step one or step two questions for you. It is a statistic question and one that comes up pretty often on your exam. Feel free to pause this video, do this question on your own, and then come back and we'll do it together. I'll get started. A group of investigators is evaluating the efficacy of intranasal ketamine in decreasing acute suicidality in teenagers admitted to the emergency department. He conducted a study in which 25 participants were randomized to receive intranasal ketamine, while 25 participants were randomized to receive placebo. The investigators ultimately found no statistically significant difference in suicidality after one month of follow-up with a level of significance fixed at 5%. They suspect an adequate statistical power. Assuming the investigators intend to keep the level of significance at 5%, which of the following changes would be most effective to increase the statistical statistical power. And our options are to decrease the sample size, to increase type 1 error, to increase alpha, to decrease type 1 error, to decrease alpha, to increase beta, or to decrease type 2 error. Now that's a lot of options, um, however some of them overlap. So let's look into that. Just a reminder, statistical power is the probability that a study will detect a true difference or reject the null hypothesis while the alternative hypothesis is true. So that's what every study aims to do. Um, now it's important to remind yourself what is alpha and beta. Um, so like I mentioned, a lot of these are the same answer choice. And because there cannot be two correct answer choices on a test, if you know that something like decreased alpha is the same as decreased type one error, then you've just knocked out two answer choices. So this is worth burning into your memory because it's extraordinarily helpful and um, it's kind of the basis of this question and a lot of questions on the exam. So let's say the study finding is positive and the reality is positive. We know that's a true positive. A true positive also stands for power and power is the same as one minus beta. Now let's go what's beta. If a study finding is negative, but in reality um, the answer is positive, then that's a false negative because the study found something falsely, and that's beta. That's your type 2 error. Okay, so a true positive is power, is 1 minus beta, and beta is false negative. Now, if the study findings are positive, but the reality is negative, that is a false positive. Uh, in reality, you know, it's not true. So the study falsely found that something is true. That's false positive. It is a type one error, also known as alpha. And then if something is negative and we found the, it's, um, the study is negative, then it's a true negative, double negative. So this is an important table. Pause this, write it down, screenshot it, put it as your background in your phone, really get to know this table. So let's go through the options now. When we decrease our sample size, we will essentially never increase our power. Um, pretty much always decreasing a sample size causes more variability and more effects of random chance. So your probability of completing a type two error would, it would increase. So uh, you're not, you're not gonna increase your power. You'll likely decrease your power by decreasing sample size. So that's not our answer. If we increase type one error, and to remind us, type one error is finding a positive uh, finding when in reality the answer is negative. So that's a false positive. Um, and that's alpha. So increasing type one error, also known as alpha, will have no direct effect on power because power is only um, true positive or false negative. So alpha is the significance level that's chosen by the researcher. So it's set at 0.05, aka 5%, which is the most common uh, percentage. And as they stated in the question, we want to keep our power and our, our, excuse me, not power, our significance level at 5%. So we're not going to want to change alpha. Um, same thing as above, increasing alpha is the same thing as increasing type 1 error. So we don't want that. See, you can could have knocked both of these out if you knew that alpha and type 1 error were the same thing. If we decrease type one error, again, we're changing alpha. We don't wanna change alpha. The experimenter, the researcher said alpha is gonna be 0 0.05 and we can't change that. Um, and then again, decreasing type one error is the same thing as decreasing alpha. See, you could have 
taken out all of these four choices. Now increasing beta, and beta is the probability of a type two error. So if we increase beta, what's happening with our power? One minus five, uh, sorry, one minus 0.5 versus one minus 0.6 gives you, um, you know, 0.5 versus 0.4. So if we increase beta, if we increase our false negatives, we're decreasing power. So we don't want to increase beta. Um, decreasing type two error is the same as um, decreasing beta, right? So this is type two error. If we decrease type two error, we're decreasing beta. If we're decreasing beta, we're increasing the amount of power that a study has. So that sounds like a great answer choice. Um, awesome. So the answer is to decrease type two error because that decreases beta, which increases power. Um, I hope you enjoyed that question. I hope it was helpful. Uh, remember, this chart is magical. Burn it into your mind. And stay tuned for the question next week.